Welcome, everybody. My name is Patrick Payne, and I'm a Chief Technology Evangelist here at Zoomasis. Today, I'm here to show you our exciting new beta Mongo Jedi driver. I'll be demonstrating this in a complete test playground, which is available to you to quickly grab these uh, demo files and run these examples without having to install anything on your computer. So the technology we're going to be using is Dockers. And Zoomasis today offers pre-built Dockers at our website. So you go to uh, dockerhub.com and you do a search for Zoomasis. And here you'll see pre-built Dockers. And Dockers are what's called containers and you can install Docker on your local workstation, PC or Mac or even Linux. Download these pre-built containers, which are kind of like mini virtual machines with everything pre-configured and ready for you to go. But today we will be doing this actually through a cloud version of Docker. So if we go to docker.com, we can click get started and choose play with Docker and use the lab environment. You will need to sign up for a free Docker account. But once you do that, you can click here and you will start up a cloud version of a Linux machine that has Docker installed and you can do all this, this Docker testing here without having to install anything. So first step I'm going to do is create a new instance and this is a basically a Linux virtual machine in the cloud that has Docker installed and everything I do here from the command prompt you can also do from a uh, desktop Docker that's installed in your workstation. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to go get Mongo. So instead of having to install Mongo, we're just going to pull a Docker. So now that I have the Mongo Docker downloaded, I'm going to run it. And in the Docker, it's Docker run dash it dash d, and then the uh, we're going to name it, and then the image we want to run, which was going to be Mongo. Now if I do a Docker, so now we have Mongo running. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull down a management Mongo Docker. Now that we have the Docker client downloaded, we're gonna fire a part up. So Docker run. Um, one neat feature we're gonna add here is what's called a, a link. And we're gonna say, hey, link to another name Docker. And what this will do is, is essentially set up the DNS and everything. So I can say ping Mongo, and it will be able to find that other container. We are going to also do a port forward, which says there's gonna be a web interface put inside that container resting on 3000, and we wish to forward it to my local machine. Now in this case, we're in the cloud, so Docker uh, Playground is going to do this all for you. If it was on your own local uh, Docker, it would just be connected to localhost port 3000. Now we say Mongo client slash Mongo client. And we do a Docker container list. We'll see that we have two Dockers running now. And you'll notice that a 3000 popped up here on the web interface. I can now click here. What we're going to do now is configure this one to talk to our Mongo instance. So they already have a, a pre-built connection string in here. We're going to clone it. We are going to change the connection string here from localhost to the name of our machine. That was what the dash dash link makes work for us. And the database that we will end up having is what's going to be called JBase ADM. It doesn't exist yet because we haven't done the JBase side yet, but as soon as we do it in JBase, it always creates a collection, the name of the account where the file is. So we press enter to see it updated everything here. We will save it. We will pick ours and tell it to connect. And we are now in the management interface looking at our Mongo. And what we're going to use this for is as we do things in our JBase, we can actually see some of these operational counters move up. Right now, because we haven't created anything, there's no collections to look at. What we're going to do here, reorganize our screen and put this in the left and this in the right.
Okay, so now we have Mongo Docker running. We have our Mongo administrative Docker running. Now we're going to pull the J Zoom Assist JBase Mongo Docker. So, Zoom Assist JBase Mongo. And while this is downloading, again, when you go to Docker Hub, you can list and find all these pre-built Dockers. And as we are updating these, like when you go to ours, you'll see the basic commands are all listed in here. Everything's short of the uh, of the Docker uh, Mongo uh, client. Um, that's something new I found. And if you know, we do a Docker image list, you'll see the different Docker containers with, as images we've downloaded our machines and which ones are up and running. So now we're gonna say Docker run, and we're gonna name this one JBase. Again, we wanna use our link command to automatically configure this to be able to find the Mongo. And then, now we should have three Dockers running. And then we use the exec command to actually get into the Docker. In this case, we can now put the name that we named it and what command we want to run. And this will basically log you in as root and then run whatever command you pass it. A lot of times you can just say bash, go run into bash, but you can also pass in a JBase command. So in this case, I'm saying just run JB and it will prompt us for account, which we want JBase ADM. And we are now in JBase, in the JBase ADM account. Now in the BP file, we have a quick little pick basic program, which will create us a file and pass the type equals Mongo. So this will tell the system that you wish to create this file in Mongo. Then I'm gonna open it. Then I'm gonna run our make demo file against the custom Mongo file and, and create some sample records in there. And then what the rest of this is showing off is that we can actually, with our Java language, modify how we're working with that file. In this case, I'm going to switch it to say, hey, when I'm reading items, I want to actually read them into a and, and, and keep it as an object. Its default behavior is to make it look like a pick multivalue so everything looks the way that you and I are used to doing it, but by telling this to, to put it as an object, I'll actually get it back as a Java object, which means it will look exactly from a JSON standpoint, the way it's storing in Mongo. So let's run that program. And that quick, it created 200 records, grabbed one of them, the first one, and, and showed it to us. So right there, 001, and this is how it looks. Now, at the same time, if I go into it looks like a normal pick record to, to you and I, and it works just like a normal pick record. Also, like you notice over here that you saw the operation. So if I now do a, a list, uh, say list uh, custom Mongo file with state equals to California, everything works like we're used to seeing. And you to, for example, say select Mongo, uh, Mongo file. See the delete activities go up. And we're going to rerun it. It should recreate our 200 items. And we're going to go over here now and look at it on this side. So now what we'll do is we'll probably have to reconnect to see the new collections. Now you can see them. And so now what we can do is say, let's look first at the dictionary. This is the query language for Mongo. We're just going to tell to, to execute a default query. Here it's found all the items and you can click on them and see what the internal Mongo structure is. So this is a, a zip A item and we'll see attribute one, two, three, and so forth. Remember when we looked at the default one it showed us, it 
Looks like these are actually um, uh, in, in a different sorted order. It's kind of interesting to see. So I could probably say Now it's unsorted and they're in the same order. So they're looking at zeros or ones. So you can see the structure. And you can see when you get down here to attribute 11, where it's an array, these are our value marks. So there you go. I, uh, I know we went through this very quickly, um, but everything here was pretty easy to pull down and run. Um, you saw me run it all directly, so everything I did here should work for you. Again, you can run this on a local Docker and do all the same items. A couple other small items I will point out is to find the IP address of the Mongo machine, there is in the MD in lowercase, MD in uppercase, mongo.config in lowercase, is a configuration file. And, and basically, two is the IP address or host name of, where, of your Mongo instance. So based on more complicated setups, um, if you didn't do the dash dash link command, you would have to go and find your IP address of that machine and put it in here. If you wanted to install Mongo directly on a machine and leave it at local host, you would change this to local host. Well, thank you everybody for watching this video on our new Mongo Jedi driver for JBase. If you have any more questions or would like to get more information, please visit www.zoomassist.com. Again, my name is Patrick Payne, and thank you for watching.